But I want to focus tonight on the deconstruction of men. Not because I think men are more important, but because I believe the attack on men has been the tip of the spear in the left's broader attack on America. And because this attack, the attack on men, is already far advanced. But even as I describe the danger, there is cause for hope. For while the left's assault on manhood has been sharp and prolonged, it has not yet succeeded. And we must make it our business as conservatives to see that it does not succeed. More than that, we must seek a revival of strong and healthy manhood in America. We need men who will shoulder responsibility, men who will start and provide for families, men who will enter the covenant of marriage and then honor it. We need men to raise up sons and daughters after them, to pass on the great truths of our history and our culture, to defend liberty, to share in the noble work of self-government. We need the kind of men who make republics possible. And it's not too much to say that our ability to get those kinds of men, those kinds of citizens, will determine the success of our long experiment in liberty. Let me just start by pressing home this point to you, that the left's attack on America leads directly to an attack on men. For years now, Democrats and other leftists have insisted that America is systemically oppressive and unjust. They've said it so much and so often to them, it's a truism. It's the very cornerstone of their worldview. Just listen to the President of the United States. Joe Biden has, as President, repeatedly decried America's systemic racism. His administration has loudly called for a new gender equity agenda to right the structural injustices of our society. His nominees have advocated critical race theory and training in equity for federal workers. This past week, the administration celebrated the introduction of an X gender marker on American passports. Did you see this? X meaning neither male nor female, just so you're keeping up. All of this points, all of this points to how important the deconstructionist agenda is for Team Biden and for the American left. I mean, you think about it. Inflation may be rampant. Store shelves are bare. It costs 100 bucks to fill up a minivan in America, but the administration will not be deterred from focusing on the important issues. They are laser focused on exposing just how bad America is. That's their top priority. Other prominent liberals have taken this the next step and identified America's many alleged woes with men in particular. Take Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. White supremacy and patriarchy are linked in a lot of ways, she says, meaning that America's systemic racism is a systemic problem with men. Author John Stoltenberg writes that talking about healthy masculinity is like talking about healthy cancer. Professor Susanna Walters of Northeastern University says it seems logical to hate men unless they pledge to vote for feminist women only and don't run for office. Now, this line of thinking, I have to tell you, it's hardly new. As I'm sure you know, the critical theory of deconstruction runs back to mid-century intellectuals like Jacques Derrida and Herbert Marcuse and farther back to the Frankfurt School of the 1930s and back farther still to Marx. Nor is it new to blame men for society's ills. You know, Marcuse is particularly interesting in this regard. He was one of the leading lights of the 1960s counterculture. And he thought that Marx was right to call American society oppressive, but wrong, or to call Western society oppressive, sorry, but wrong to see that that oppression was principally economic. That was Marx's mistake. No, the really oppressive thing about American society, according to Marcuse, was culture. And while Marx pinned his hopes on the working class, the proletariat, working class men really in particular, Marcuse saw those same men as the problem. They were too culturally conservative, too hidebound, too traditional. Now Marcuse concluded that the revolution would only come from the well-educated elite who could see beyond mirages like gender and manhood, which brings us back to today's American left. They have swallowed that theory whole 
and they are repeating it from every platform where they have power, which is just about everywhere. University curricula abound with seminars on masculinity and its defects. To take just one example of the kind of thing that's on offer, consider Professor David Cohen of the Drexel Klein School of Law. Traditional masculinity, he says, has oppressed girls and women and limited the identity construction of all boys and men. Seminar at Williams College, which is called Performing Masculinity in Global Popular Culture, asks, why must masculinity be the purview of males at all? It's an important question. <laughs> Answering that, by the way, will cost you $75,000 a year. You know, even our military academies are in on the act. West Point reportedly held mandatory events last year addressing gender norms, including toxic masculinity. One cadet said afterward, I'm being taught how not to be a man. And men are getting the message. They are leaving higher education in record numbers. I suspect you've seen the Wall Street Journal's recent reporting on this, just this issue. Women now make up 60% of college students, men 40%. Experts predict a two-to-one ratio soon, sped along by the pandemic.